somewhere in the dankest, stankest casino on Fremont Street, Jerry Tillery laughs his ass off at the LA Chargers. If you thought Yasiel Puig was in prison because he had to play in the Korean League, boy, do we have news for you. And we also have an extremely vague outline as to how long Cooper Cup will be out for the Rams. Hi, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. It's November 15th, 2022. I am back home with the wife. I am cautiously optimistic about nudity in my immediate future. Fingers crossed. If you like the content that we put out about LA sports, clickety clack the like button. Clickety clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And yes, comment. I am not omnipotent. I welcome replies. So, before we go through the news and notes from around LA, quick look at the scoreboard. Jalen Clark scored 19 points last night. He led 8th ranked UCLA to an 86-56 victory over Norfolk State. Down in Houston, Paul George drops 22 points, and the Clippers drop the Rockets for the third time in as many games this season, 122-106. to Also, the Kings' four-game winning streak is kaput. Calgary edged them up north 6-5. Meanwhile, today, the Clippers are in action at Dallas at 5.30. There is rumblings, talk, scuttlebutt that Kawhi Leonard will return. Yeah, not tonight. He's out for his 13th consecutive game. Uh, also, Vermont is in town. They're going to play USC basketball at 8 p.m. With Vince Owachoku out due to that heart issue that he had over the summer, we've been wondering what UCLA, UCSC will do in response. And their first response is to have Joshua Morgan play the big. It's worked defensively so far. Opponents are shooting less than 40% from two-point range. Ha. <sighs> Wherefore art thou, Jerry Tillery? Wherefore art thou? If you remember last week, the Chargers cut ties and it was a little weird that they would cut ties with the defensive linemen because they knew that they were, they were not, uh, they were, their depth is being tested all over the roster. The Chargers at the end of Sunday's game up in San Francisco are down 15 guys who are regular contributors, 15. Now, the NFL roster has changed over time, but back when I was young, back when I had a future, an NFL roster was 45 players. You're talking if it were that time, one third of the Chargers roster has missed or is missing major time for the Bolts. So they cut Jerry Tillery and they're trying to basically make it sound like he was a bit of a turd. And if Tillery is laughing his full head off in Vegas, I don't blame him. Because what happened on Sunday, Oticio Obonia and Christian Covington, both defensive linemen, both gone for the year. Season-ending injuries. And I got to tell you, the Chargers, when it comes to these injuries, it's they're outdoing themselves. Because now it's starting to get a little repetitive. Covington tears a pectoral muscle, just like left tackle Rayshon Slater did. He's gone for the year. He's going to need surgery to repair it. In addition to that, Ogbonia ruptured his patellar tendon, just like cornerback J.C. Jackson. That's really what bothers me. It's like the Chargers have run out of body parts to injure. So they're just recycling the same injuries over and over. It's getting boring, guys. I mean, come up with something interesting now. Peak my interest. Stop being repetitive. Tell me... Tell me Justin Herbert is out with neurosyphilis. Get me interested in the project or something. Well, we're going down to the sideline for a report. Yeah, trainers are telling me that, that uh, Herbert went to the sideline because he needs a penis swab in the tent. That would be interesting to me. I'm tired of hearing about pectoral muscles and patellar tendons. Just saying, give me something different to talk about. Now, if you're wondering why don't they re-sign Jerry Tillery, he's been claimed by the Las Vegas Raiders. So say what you want about the guy, but at least he's going to fail now in a town that might be more suitable for fun. I don't know. Um, the the uh, Chargers, by the way, are down to three defensive linemen by the end of the game. 
again, and live your best life, Tillery. Who am I to judge? One other note for the Chargers, tight end Gerald Everett is day-to-day -day with his groin. Yeah, that's enough. We don't like to go into depth about groins here. I don't want to... Uh, how do I describe this? I think every guy has a friend from high school that they really, really liked, you know, but for some reason, you just have, you find out after high school, after you hung out with the guy that the dude wound up in prison and you're kind of not surprised. <laughs> that is what we Dodger fans are now facing with Yasiel Puig. So I tell you that when he, if I tell you that Yasiel Puig is now facing prison time, are you really surprised? Are you really? Somewhere in the depths of your soul, aren't you kind of like, yeah, I can kind of see it happening. Well, here's what happened. He has pleaded to uh, a charge about, basically it had to do with gambling with an illegal online gambling operation. Now the maximum sentence is five years prison time. So they haven't made the actual decision. He could go behind bars. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't see it happening because normally when you make a plea deal with something, that means that you've worked out a deal and there's no way that Yasiel Puig or his lawyers will be like, yeah, we'll, we'll take prison time, not for placing a bet in an illegal site. But for Pete's sakes, dude, you, if there was any way that you would have imagined Yasiel Puig going to prison, you would have thought it would have been back in Cuba for Pete's sakes. You came to the land of freedom and you still wound up in the legal system. What were you thinking? And everybody still likes Yasiel Puig, pretty much. He'll like do things on social media. He'll hashtag Puig your friend. Now it's Puig your celly. We don't need this in our lives, dude, come on. Take advantage of the freedom that you've been offered by being an American. How do you think the Castro family would have re responded if you were going online to illegal sites in Cuba? By the way, side note about the Dodgers, Ken Rosenthal is hearing that the Dodgers might pursue Justin Verlander. I only mention that because Rosenthal is legit. I don't necessarily want to put a whole heck of a lot into it just yet. It was reported yesterday that Cooper Cup has a high ankle sprain after uh, he got somebody rolled over him during a tackle uh, Sunday's game against Arizona. Now, there tend to be two types of ankle sprains for pro athletes. One where you're basically out for two weeks. The other, you are out for a month. The Rams are mum as to which. I am only making a guess. I think his agent is going to ask him to hang out for the month. That's just a guess. We'll just find out. Because there are more things going on with these things than, say, trainers and players. There are going to be people lobbying him for, do, for going in either direction. Somebody give props to UCLA football. Despite the fact that they did lose, they know where their money is coming from. They have decided to remove four tarps from the Rose Bowl, which will increase capacity for the USC game to about 70,000. Don't be too impressed just yet. The Rose Bowl still has eight tarps put in by UCLA. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be gradual, folks. And by the way, again, they need to sell out the game in order to avoid their lowest season average ever. For USC football, this note is not exactly earth shattering. There was an outside chance that freshman defensive back Zion Branch could return this year after knee surgery. Now we know it's not going to happen, but he is a freshman, plenty of time to make a career for himself with the burgundy and gold. We've been talking for months literally since I started this channel, about why Lakers trade rumors are complete crap. And one of the reasons, we've been going through the reasons, but one I haven't mentioned recently is that the roster has never been whole yet, okay? So when I want you to keep that in mind. The Lakers are actually being patient for good or for bad. So when you read about some other outlandish idea about trading LeBron, about trading Anthony Davis, the Lakers are in no interest of doing that because they don't have yet either a healthy Dennis Schrader or a healthy Thomas Bryant 
in the lineup. You might find that a little hard to believe, but that's actually the thought process. By the way, the another reason that they don't want to make a trade too quickly, one of the picks that they sent to New Orleans to land Anthony Davis could wind up being the number one overall pick next year. Give uh, Rob Link a slow clap for that one. Good job, Rob. Well played. Can't build up a team that can avoid the number one pick. We see you, Rob. Happy you signed your extension. The LA Galaxy exercised contract options on six players. Two of them were starters on the back line, so there is some impact there. Martin Caceres and Sega Koulibaly, they already have 18 players that are under contract. They have options on five players that they did decline. Basically, what I'm trying to suggest to you, these all just feel like, eh, whatever type of moves. If the Galaxy are going to make a bigger move, these ones aren't it. But I do want to shoot down the idea of a big move for LAFC. I've mentioned repeatedly, don't trust the foreign soccer press. They never list sources. They don't even say we have sources. They say, oh, I heard that. And they say, oh, no, for all we know, for all we know, they heard it from a candle in the background. The voices in their head are telling them about the rumors. So I want to let LAFC fans feel at ease. The foreign press is claiming Carlos Vela wants to go back to Mexico. That he's accomplished everything he wants with LAFC. Here's the problem. There is no direct quote from either Carlos Vela, a friend of Carlos Vela, a relative of Carlos Vela, the agent of Carlos Vela, saying that Carlos Vela wants to go back to Mexico. He is, and oh, by the way, he is under contract with LAFC for the entirety of next year. There is absolutely zero to go on suggesting that Carlos Vela is going to return to Liga MX. So if you're an LAFC fan and you stumble on that online, wipe it away. It don't mean diddly poo. So we have plenty to comment on, especially if you're a Chargers fan and we're a Dodgers fan for that matter. Let me know about these things. Let me know what you think of the comments thread. And if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We do talk LA sports here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.